So tell me, how does Patanjali 1 begin? Before that, tell me Patanjali's story. Who remembers Patanjali's story? Quick, huh? Come on, come on. You just took the exam. Now you all know the story. Who can tell me the story? Patanjali actually imparted, came down to impart this knowledge. And what was the knowledge? Yeah. What is the first chapter called? The discipline of yoga. Yeah. What is yoga? Yoga is not the asanas and the postures that you do. Yes. Yoga, yoga means union. Where the small mind, my little small mind that goes on yuck, 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 all day. Yeah? When that unites with the big mind, the self that I am, that union is called yoga. Yeah? Yoga anu shasanam. Yeah? The discipline of yoga is yoga anu shasanam. That is the first chapter. He said, now I will enunciate the discipline of yoga. So what is the discipline? Why is discipline required? He told us there are three, three types of happiness. Rajasik, Tamasik, Sattvic. You remember that? Yeah? Give me an example of Rajasik happiness. Come on, good. It seems like pleasure, yeah, one more gulab jam, one more gulab jam, one more gulab jam. Seems like pleasure right now, but after a few hours or next day I have a nice stomach ache. Yeah? Rajasik happens. Tamasik happiness? There's no happiness at all. There's no happiness, it's just an illusion. Yeah, 
a lazy man sitting in front of the TV account on the couch. He is feeling guilty also that oh you know I should get up and do other things. I should work. I should get a job for myself. What am I doing? There's really no happiness there. Yeah, but alasya. That's one obstacle. You remember? Yeah. Tamasic happiness. Yeah. And what is third? Sattvic. What is sattvic? Uh, in the beginning, it's not charming. Yes. It's not very really small. Yeah. But it leads to happiness. Perfect. Oh, Patanjali exam I have to give. I have to study all of it again. And study. Why do I have to take an exam? Yeah, the mind is so resistant to taking the exam. It's so resistant to studying for it. Yeah. It will come up with all logic. Oh, I don't need to. Unnecessary this is. Yeah. You noticed? It was the state of your mind not too long ago, last week. Yeah. But you sat through it, how many ever, two, three hours it took. You sat down, you wrote the answers and see now you can go ahead. Yeah. Many of you wrote emails also to me that thank you, you made us do this exam. Just by taking the exam I feel, oh I had not understood this during the session. Now by writing it, I understand better. How many of you experience this? Yeah. So you see, sattvic happiness. You actually experience this example. Yeah. So, for this sattvic happiness to happen, what did we do? We put in a discipline, no? That we must study from Patanjali 1 through 5 and we must take the exam. This is a discipline of the mind. Right? Do you get it? Yeah? That's exactly what is Anushasanam. Yeah? So, the discipline is required. Disciplining this mind is required for Sattvic happiness. Clear? Now, why discipline is required? Why can't my mind understand, oh, this will easily lead to a sattvic happiness in the long run? Why? Because of the distractions. Huh? Because of the vrittis. Yeah? Vrittis are nothing but the tendency of this mind. Yeah? Or modification of this mind. And what are the vrittis that you've learnt? Five vrittis. Tell me. Pramana, looking for proof all the time. Yeah. Second? Viparyaya. Viparyaya. Yeah. Incorrect understanding. Lack of comprehension of the situation. Or wrong knowledge is Viparyaya. Third is? Vikalpa. Hallucinating. This will happen, that will happen. This should happen. Wow, I'll become the queen of Greece. Yeah? All kinds of weird things the mind can think and get lost in it. Yeah? Fourth, Nidra. Yeah? Even in sleep, recognize this, that all these are awake. Yeah? In sleep, you have some doubts. In daytime, when you had the doubt, it reflects in my mind, creates an impression. And when I'm sleeping, the same pramana comes up, the same doubt comes up in a different way. My mind starts looking for proof in sleep, in my dreams. Yeah? I had a viparyaya, an incorrect understanding of something during the day. I saw two friends standing there and talking outside my house. I start thinking, oh, they are conspiring against me. Yeah? Incorrect understanding. This I start dreaming in the night. Do you see this? Yeah, that is why nidra is very important. It is a vritti of the mind. Yeah? And the fifth one is smriti. Yeah? My mind is all the time in the past, in the past, in the past. Yeah? This being in the past itself is such a big obstacle. It loses out on what is the present moment right now. That is why a discipline is required. Got it? 
Why a discipline is required? Because of the five vrittis. And the mind constantly keeps jumping from one to the next, next to the next, next to the next, next to the next. Yeah? It's constantly engaged, constantly engaged. Have you noticed? Yeah? So it is very important to discipline this mind, to train this mind. It's become like a wild animal. A wild animal needs to be, you know, you throw that hoop around it and then you need to train it. Yeah, you need to control it. Clear? First chapter is clear. Discipline of yoga. Yeah. This automatically flows to chapter number 2. What is the chapter number 2 called? Perfect. Honoring the practice. What practice? Now, if a discipline is required, to be able to discipline the mind, I need a practice. Got it? That is Abhyasa. So you see the flow between chapter 1 and chapter 2? If these are the five vrittis of the mind and the mind needs to be disciplined, I need a practice. Chapter 2. Abhyasa. And how should this practice be? Dirga Kala. What is Dirga Kala? Long time. Ah, for a long time. Yes. It cannot be for a short time I do something, then I leave it, then I come back again after some time. Again I do it for some time, again I leave it. Will my mind get disciplined? No. Without a gap, consistently, for a long time, you keep practicing, keep practicing. Meditate, do satsang, read knowledge. That is why there are different, different things, no? Because the mind tends to get bored of one very quickly. So if it gets bored of one, jump to another one. Gets bored of the second satsang or something, then jump to knowledge. Keep jumping between knowledge, satsang, being with the guru, being in a sangha. Reading the scriptures, keep jumping between these. And what will happen? The mind will finally get disciplined. So it has to be done dirghkal for a long time. And with satkara. What is satkara? Respect. Honor and respect. When you respectfully do it, it really sinks in. It becomes your nature. If you don't have respect for something, that can never become your nature. Have you noticed? Yeah. That is why again again disciplining this mind again to come back to its center. Again and again you know, recognize the gratitude for the Guru. That is why Guru Purnima. It's a celebration. Yeah. Thanking the Guru that you gave me all this in this one year. Once a year we thank the Guru yeah, from the deepest corner of my heart. Thank you so much for being there. Yeah? I see I have grown. I must have grown only this much in this one year. But I have taken one step ahead. Thank you for that one step. Next year I'll take another step. And then I'll take another step. Slowly I will get there. Yeah? This is Satkar. Yeah? This is honor. Yeah, so, Abhyasa is the first pillar of Patanjali. The second pillar is? What is the second Vairagya. pillar? Vairagya. Yeah, if the mind is still lost in oh, what Mridula was saying and what um, Sumant was saying, my mind is still lost. I am sitting here closing my eyes but I am thinking about Mridula and Sumant. So, my mind is still outside. It is still stuck in Raga and Dvesha. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Till the time the mind is lost outside in this world of five senses, it is not going to find its center. And if it does not find its center, forget about it. You cannot be a Vairagi. Yes. So again and again, practicing Dropping these objects of these senses for another 20 minutes, I am not going to bother. 
about these objects of senses. I go within and just be with myself. And then slowly, slowly increase this practice. And then after a time, it will become your nature so much that you don't have to sit with your eyes closed. It is a part of you. Yeah? That is called Vairag. Yeah? Then whatever I do, every action that I do, I do not create a karma. Why do I create karma? Remember we did in the session? How do I create a karma? Tell me. Because of Raga and Vesha. Correct. Yes. If I have too much attachment towards whatever I am doing, an action or a thought in my head, yeah? if I have too much attachment towards it, I will create a karma, an impression. And this will go and sit in my karma bag. Do you see this? Yeah. Suppose this is your oval karma bag because that's all you can see right now. It goes and sits in my karma bag. Yeah? I create impressions and keep putting them in my karma bag. Yes, That is why Vairagya is important. You can't keep practicing forever, right? How many lifetimes will you just keep doing Abhyasa without Vairagya? What's the point? Are you seeing this? Yeah? You do Abhyasa and with that Vairagya is equally important. Dropping, letting go of the attachment that I have towards one sense object. It could be a person, it could be a situation I want I, or I don't want or it could be a thing. I'm still lost. And how many lifetimes are you going to take? Are you going to keep practicing for 10 lifetimes, 20 lifetimes without Vairagya? It's not going to work. Are you seeing what I'm saying? It's like hopping on one foot. Have you played that game? As kids we used to play, remember? Hop on one foot. How far will you run? How far will you get with that? Not too far, right? You need two feet to really run fast. To catch speed. That is why two pillars of Patanjali. Abhyasa and Vairagya. Got it? Take that question. See, when it comes to Vairagya, um, Vairagya can also happen between Raga, because of Raga and Vaisha, it's like, you know, a kind of frustration can cause Vairagya. So now that frustration causing Vairagya, that can also lead to Karma, right? Yes. Because it's, it's a case of hopelessness, it's like, you know what, I'm just tired, I give up right now. That kind of Vairagya, is the Vairagya caused by um, maybe Dvesha that, you know what, I'm not getting anywhere, I'm just giving up right now, in a case of surrender. Perfect. That can cause... Yeah, you have an impression in the bag. Yeah. From your Raga Dvesha, you jumped and you became sad. Sadness is also an impression. Got it? Any emotion, any emotion that you attach to a particular object, whether it is a person, a situation or a thing, becomes an impression. Yeah? So drop, let go, just be. Yeah? The Abhyasa will help you in understanding how to just be. Yeah? But then again and again you have to let go, let go, then be. Then again, let go, then be. That is why both are required. Yes? One will not work. Both are required. That is why right in your basic course or happiness program or part one, whatever it was called, you learned both, no? Sudarshan Kriya and you learned the knowledge points. Live in the present moment. Accept people and situations as they are. Do not be a football of other people's opinions. Remember? Both hand in hand right in your first exposure. Got it? 
because both are required. Yes? Abhyasa and Vairagya. And when I have both together, then how am I doing my karma? Skillfully. Yeah? Whatever action comes my way, I just act whatever comes spontaneously from my nature. Yeah? My nature is of love, compassion, yeah? kindness. Whatever comes from my nature, in that situation, I act out of my nature, not out of my raga and duisha in the mind. Yeah? If I act out of raga and duisha, again I have created an impression. Clear? Yeah? So, acting like this, spontaneously, devoid of raga and duisha, is called yoga karmasu kaushalam. Yeah? You are... Doing your action skillfully. And that itself is a yoga. Yoga means the union between the small mind and the big mind. Yeah. So, this brings us to yoga, karmasu, kaushalam. Yeah. That completes chapter number 2. Honoring the practice. Yeah. So then Patanjali goes to chapter number 3 to help you go deeper into the practice. What can help me go deeper? Yeah. Samadhi. Yeah. So he told you Sampragnata Samadhi. What is Sampragnata? Who remembers? With awareness. Yeah. Some pragnata samadhi are of four types. Vitarka, vichara, ananda and asmita. Yeah. What is tarka? Is a logic. There is a logic in the mind. Kutarka is a wrong logic, illogical, bad logic. Yeah? She, she and he are standing in the corner and looking at me and smiling. Yeah? I have applied a wrong logic in my head and then come up with that viparyaya. A kutarka was behind your viparyaya. Are you seeing this? If I had a sensible logic, I would not fall into the trap of Viparyaya. Yeah? So, see this logic can be any way, it's not loyal. It can be Tarka, it can be Kutarka. So, what is Vitarka? A special logic. This discussion of knowledge, us sitting together here right now, and discussing this knowledge is Vitarka. Yeah? Right now you are experiencing Vitarka Anugama Samadhi. Yeah? See how sattvic the state of the mind is. It's absolutely calm and cool. Not that the problems are not there. The problems are all there. Still my mind is centered right now. Are you seeing this? This experience itself is called Vitarka Anugama Samadhi. Yeah? And different instances where a special logic comes up happen in life. For example, you see somebody in the family you know, just pass away. Just seeing the dead body brings a sudden silence inside. A quietness. Yeah? Your bickering mind which was bickering about oh this happened and she said this and all that yuck, 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 for a moment just shuts up. Have you noticed? Yeah. Vitarka Anugama Samadhi. With awareness means with open eyes you can experience these Samadhis. That is why Sampragnata. Vichara. Thought. The thought is hovering. There are two types of thoughts. One thought that bothers me. 
she said this or he said this they did this they should have not done this it should have been like this this is bothering me yeah and a second type of thought which just hovers around yeah? it is kind of cool the ac is too cool and it goes away and then again you just feel the coolness that feeling of coolness is also a thought yeah but it doesn't bother me the way something else bothers me oh he said this got it yeah so when you are in that kind of state where it is just hovering on the top it is vichara anugama samadhi yeah ananda anugama samadhi we have all experienced when you're dancing singing just very happy yeah and asmita sometimes it happens during kriya when you're deep in meditation suddenly that i has gone yeah i me mine all the time we have this memory you know and you're stuck on to that for some time you don't know where you are what is happening but you're somewhere deep yeah asmita anugama samadhi yes now how can these be experienced so he gave you techniques come on tell me who remembers the techniques consciousness ha viram viram is the in in the hindi language the full stop yeah stop recognize my mind is going on and 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 consciously stop yeah consciously rest it's virama pratyaya yeah. second is samskara sheshanyo i have just written the first words huh? the key words so samskara sheshanyo is through impressions now you cannot say oh i don't have past life impressions of meditation no 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 you definitely have that is why you've come to this level huh in knowledge very few people can get so deep into knowledge also yeah. so you definitely have some residual samskaras and samskaras are not just the past life even earlier on in your life you did create some impressions yeah those impressions of goodness the impression of quietness of love within yeah. that itself comes up in the form of meditation or rest yeah because you know this now your good karmas will bring you peace will bring you rest your bad karmas will just bring an agitated mind yeah so if calmness is being experienced today it's because of some previous karmas or samskara sheshanya yeah third videha yeah practicing i am not this body yeah body is just a tool yes i have a body i am not the body yeah next prakriti laya yeah just being with nature just sitting next to water flowing and then you just watch the water flowing sometimes just go for a nature walk and hear the chirping of the birds and then you can feel the wind moving and then the leaves rustling just being with that quietness yeah you can get into a prakriti laya samadhi that's also one beautiful technique technique number 5 shraddha just through my faith just through my faith in this technique in this knowledge in my master through that shraddha i can just go deep into meditation yeah next is virya virya courage is required huh because the mind wants to run away see right now also you are listening to me but in the middle your mind gets up and says oh did i switch off the gas or did i park the car in the correct spot yeah did i do this the mind wants to run away 
again bringing the mind back here requires virya no disciplining the mind requires courage yeah next is smriti what is smriti memory of a previous meditation that i have done can take me deep into meditation again right now yeah memory of just being with gurudev when you are just seeing him sometimes you go with all your questions to guruji has it happened to you you go into his kutir i'm going to ask him this today i'm going to ask him that you go there the moment you step inside and boof all your questions are gone you are in a different space altogether have you noticed all the questions go away and yeah, that quietness that such a beautiful feeling and remembering that sitting here again takes all the questions of the mind away have you noticed this is the magic of smriti beautiful technique yeah everybody will have their own personal smriti to actually help them come back to that state so when your mind is bickering a lot and going yeah 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 yeah, yeah crying and whining yeah take it to that smriti that beautiful experience of meditation that you have again it will go deep down into meditation next teevra samvegana asana teevra the intensity of my commitment how intense i am two people can go to the same guitar class one person goes every day and practices everything that the coach tells him or her and the second one is all lukewarm one day he goes next day he doesn't go doesn't practice doesn't do his homework enough intensity matters no are you seeing this this first person will become a rock star and the other will just give up guitar are you seeing this you cannot say that the coach was not good no it was your intensity this person's intensity was very very strong and this person was not was lukewarm are you seeing this so teevra samvegana if you are absolutely intense about this yeah you are very committed to your own personal growth rocket speed you will get there you definitely have to get there there is no other way it is a one way street by the way i tell you that there is no going back yeah it depends on you you want to walk at the speed of a tortoise or you want to catch the rocket and sit on it and just go yeah there is only one way and there is only one destination there is nowhere else to go so become teevra Three is for the three levels. You remember the slow kind of people, the people who have a medium kind of intensity, and the people who are like extremely intense. The three intensities. Yeah. And the last technique is Ishwar Pranidhan. What is Ishwar Pranidhan? One pointed devotion. Perfect. one pointed devotion to god who god the one sitting in white clothes and a long white beard sitting up in the clouds no that is only in michelangelo's painting <laughs> yeah that god that brahman consciousness that energy which is all pervading everywhere in me in him in her in her in him who oh, it is in every person it is in everything it is in every animal every tree every living and non living aspect is just that that one consciousness that one energy that energy is so fantastic that it has manifested in different different forms but it is only one energy seeing that one energy in all is ishwar pranidhan yeah one pointed devotion to god one pointed 
even in your enemy it is the same god that is right here within you yeah being able to see that that will get you there at jet speed so these are the nine techniques he gave which will help you go deep into samadhi okay yeah. this was chapter 3 so immediately this goes into chapter 4 which is who is god okay you're telling me one point of devotion will get me there at jet speed so then tell me who is god so patanjali explains god is he who is free from klesha karma vipaka aashaya and is the purusha vishesha what is klesha you tell me suffering hmm. suffering and how many types of sufferings are there five types of kleshas are there what are they asmita avidya raga dvesha and abhinivesha what is asmita सेपरेशन this i and you itself creates problem creates suffering so dvaitam is the root cause of suffering that is asmita yeah second is avidya avidya is ignorance ignorance yeah lost in the maya of this world yeah that one brahman conscious manifested in all these forms but i forgot the one brahman consciousness the energy behind all these forms now i get lost in this form and that form and that form says something to me i feel all sad and i'm angry and i'm all sulking and you know it's the end of the day what is the root cause of my misery because i got so attached to that one form yeah i dropped seeing the brahman consciousness the god that is manifesting in that form in front of me today this is avidya getting lost in this maya again and again and again whether in the maya of people whether in the maya of situations or in the maya of things is called avidya yes raga and dvesha you know raga i want i want i want i want this i want this again i am lost in a form this want 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 one day becomes possessiveness actually i got that person now i become possessive about this person yeah and then i become possessive and then there is a lot of anger when i see this person talking to another person no no you should only be with me and then there is anger and there is drama and then there is jealousy you see the whole nine yards come up where did this misery come up from from my one little raga got it same with your dvesha yeah and both raga and dvesha go and sit in this bag don't forget this is the biggest cause of misery you will come back and how many times do you want to come back because of that person is he or she worth it how many times stop stop torturing yourself get out of this klesha yeah and the fifth type of klesha is abhinivesha fear 
fear of this, fear of that, fear of that. See, behind your fear is also just a raga or a dvesha. Nothing else. Yeah? I love money, I love money, I want to keep my money, I want to keep my money. Because of this raga, I have a fear of losing that money. Are you seeing this? Yeah? So behind your raga and dvesha only, abhini vesha comes up. Not in every raga and dvesha, but if there is an abhini vesha, if there is a fear, it definitely has a raga dvesha behind it, hiding quietly. Yes? These five are the kleshas, the miseries, the cause of misery. God is that who is free from all these. And it's not somebody sitting up in the clouds we are talking about. It is I. I have just forgotten that I am God. Because I got lost in these glaciers. The day I wake up from these glaciers, yeah, all these will drop off. All the impressions will just drop off. Yeah, and I will be that pure being that I am. I am really. It's just covered by the clouds of all this. Okay? So God is that which is free from klesha. God is that which is free from karma now. Karma we learnt already is caused from this raga and this dvesha. If God becomes free from raga, dvesha, abhinivesha, vidya, asmita, how can this bag get full? And if this bag does not get full, there is no karma. Okay? So simple. What is vipaka? Karma phalam. Yeah? And ashaya. The impression of action. So the impression which is formed inside. Again and again and again and again. Which leads to a karma. That impression also he is free of. Vipaka is the karma phalam. Ashaya is the impression of action. When he is free of the karma itself, what karma phalam? He does not run behind karma phalam. Yeah? The mind is not lost in raga and dvesha. He doesn't do action out of raga and dvesha. He does action because something has come his way and spontaneously out of his nature he acts. Yeah? Kaushalam. Yoga karmasu kaushalam. Skillfully he acts. So there is no karma phalam, vipaka. Got it? Arshaya is the impression of action. Yeah? So he is free from these four and he is called the purusha vishesha. The special being or the supreme being that I am. Yes? So I am only the purusha that is covered by this prakriti and I have identified with this prakriti and started thinking I am this prakriti. But no, you are not the prakriti. You are the purusha vishesha. Clear? Yeah. Who is God is clear? Yeah. So then, this God, this purusha vishesha, this supreme being, yeah, that is, I was always there right from the beginning of creation, Brahman consciousness. Therefore, it is the master of all. Yeah? In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, no, that I gave this knowledge even to Manu and Surya. Yeah? So, Arjuna says, what? They were there thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And you are here in front of me today. How did you give this knowledge to them? So, Lord Krishna says, I was there then and I am here now. And I will be. Yes. So is the case with you, Arjuna. But you have forgotten and I remember. Got it? This is what he is talking about. That it is the master of all. And this I or the God within us can be invocated or invited out with the chant Om. Yeah? Om has a lot of beautiful meanings, I have told you. No? 
even that remember i told you that the earth rotates around its axis and the particular frequency of that is the same as the frequency of ohm yeah and you go very very deep into meditation you can actually experience the vibration of ohm yeah not as the sound it's not sense of sound working there it's the vibration yeah and it is the vibration of the universe as well in outer space as well the same frequency exists yeah the beautiful things that many scientists are discovering now you you should watch quantum physics certain videos of quantum physics yeah so ohm is that one sound that is like you know its name or you can address it by that yeah. so that is ohm and it is an obstacle remover it is an obstacle remover yeah so what obstacles are there patanjali says there are nine obstacles come on quickly tell me what are they they right here the adi is Hmm. My body is ill. Yeah, I make up all excuses. This becomes a big obstacle in my meditation. Yeah. Second, stamina. Stamina is what? Illness. Uh, the mind getting, you know, lost in all this. Getting lost in viparya itself is an an illness. No, mummy, you don't love me. Mummy, you don't love me. I know you don't love me. Children do that sometimes. No? Yeah. There's another baby in the house. The elder child will start feeling insecure. You're developing your own illness. From that young age, we have started doing this to ourselves. Yeah. And now we have these fixed concepts in our head. fix things that this is the way it is i am telling you this is the way it is this is an illness of the mind yeah so vyadhi and stano third is samshaya doubt big obstacle yeah the moment you start doubting oh this this will not work for me this meditation does not work for me finish it's going to stop working for you the moment you start doubting oh no 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 this guru ji is not good this teacher is not good oh no this scripture is not good finished it's going to stop working for you it's an obstacle you create for yourself the guru or the scripture or the teacher does not lose anything you are the one who creates an obstacle on your own path yeah that's some shay what's pramada Huh. I know this is wrong, but I continue to do it. Yeah, and and I know this is right, but I don't do it. Remember, Guru Ji gave an example. You know, it is the right thing to do to pay taxes, but you evade them. Remember this example, Pramada. Yes. So, evading doing the right thing is pramada, yeah. or knowingly doing the wrong thing is pramada. Yeah. Big obstacle. For a few days, IRS will not come your way, but in the end, within a year, by the time you know they find out, they are going to come and knock your door. Yeah. So it is going to be suffering in the long run. recognize this pramada always gives you suffering in the long run it's a big big obstacle so if your mind is used to all these escape routes you know escaping out of a situation by lying by cheating you know by saying you know sometimes people butter the other person you know to get out of a situation they manipulate others yeah very well knowing 
that I should not do this, this is wrong, but still they manipulate others. They think they got out of the situation. For a short while it might be quiet, but it is going to come back to you. If not in this lifetime, even worse in the next lifetime, it's coming back. Even worse, I tell you. Nobody's worth it that you come back into this world for them. Nobody. Do not give so much importance to other people. Yeah. So drop hating somebody. Because your hatred for him or her will bring you back. Yeah. Probably as his her son or daughter. I'm telling you. Yeah. So drop this tendency of pramada if you have. Knowingly doing something wrong. Drop. Recognize this and drop it. Yeah. Next is Alasya. Oh, who will do Kriya? So much first stage, second stage, third stage. Yeah. Or not going to the gym, not exercising. Good. When you become 50, 60 years old, then your body will tell you what you did. Yeah. When you will not be able to digest simple foods that you could earlier and not enjoy all those foods then you know good now i'm paying for my alasya yeah so recognize this big obstacle big obstacle alasya yeah avirati what is avirati lack of Avirati is like some particular object of sense I am stuck in and I keep thinking about that only. I'm just lost in that one particular sense object. It could be anything. It could be some beautiful woman yeah, or a very handsome man. It could be food item. It could be somebody's words. Somebody's words are a sense object. Getting lost in a particular sense object and not being able to come out of it is avirati. That will never let you meditate. Impossible. Because in the mind, again and again, a repetition will go on of that particular sense object. And you will not be able to meditate. I will give you a very silly example. Yeah, your washing machine is going on. You know that it does not go off on its own. You have to get up and turn it off. Yeah? You sit to meditate and you remind yourself, in 20 minutes I have to get up and switch off the washing machine. Full 20 minutes you are really thinking about the washing machine. Have you noticed? I have to get up and switch off the washing machine. I have to get up and switch off the washing machine. I have to get up and switch off the washing machine. You are not meditating. Are you seeing this? Avirati. Yeah. So write down, huh? if you have not recognized these in the previous sessions, write down what are your Aviratis, what do you get lost in, write down your Pramadas, on your own take up homeworks, this is self-disciplining. Yeah. Next is Bhranti Darshana. What is Bhranti Darshanam? Some people think, no, oh, you know, I am enlightened, my Kundalini has become Jagrit. Yeah? This is happening to me, that is happening to me. God came, Lord Krishna came in my dreams and told me this is what I have to do. All kinds of yoga maya can happen. Huh? I'm telling you, I want to warn all of you. You are walking on this path. Yoga maya is going to be running behind you. Yeah. Till, the, till now you were just lost in moha maya. What is moha maya? Moha maya is related to the five senses. Sense of sight, smell, taste, touch and sound. All this is moha maya. Yeah, till now you were lost in Mohamaya. When you start walking the spiritual path, 
yeah you are getting deeper within yourself so stronger maya needs to grip you and that is called yoga maya yeah so yoga maya happens to lot of people ha huh? be worry of it very very worry of it oh i saw an illusion this this is happening i'm telling you white color light blue color light people come and tell me so blue color light what is that is that guruji Or is that self brahman i saw the brahman today you saw brahman who are you then the seer cannot be seen naksha gochara the seer cannot be seen yeah so recognize this ha huh? if yoga maya has started captivating you be very worry on this path it happens to every sincere spiritual seeker yeah bhranti darshan illusion big obstacle टूटी Yeah, like this. Slowly, slowly, you will become stronger. It is for your strength. Somebody who has already crossed that path is telling you, "Oh, this happens on the path." It's so simple. Then you are more confident. Oh, okay, this is what happens on this path. It's okay. Now I'm not going to get disillusioned by this also. One more Maya has come my way. I'm going to become stronger than this Maya also. So don't get into bhranti darshana. Kya? Why is it all so complex? <laughs> <laughs> it is so simple. <laughs> <laughs> Only the really brave ones get through complicated tests, no? He wants the brave ones to win and reach the other shore. Yeah, and you show that you are brave. You get this. How much ever time it takes, how much ever effort I have to put in, I will. This is called tivra samvedana. Then it becomes asana. It becomes very easy. Yeah. So clear, bhranti darshana. Yeah. Next is. अलब्ध भूमि कत्व वॉट्स अलब्ध भूमि कत्व हाँ नाउ देर इज वन मोर थिंग आई माइट हैव फुगॉट इन टू टेल यू अबाउट अलब्ध भूमि कत्व इनिशियली वेन यू सिट टू मेडिटेट इन योर इनिशियल इयर्स और योर इनिशियल मंथ्स द मेरिट ऑफ योर मेडिटेशन गोज टू योर एंडिस्टर्स yeah you have a rin rin is a loan yeah you have a loan of your parents they have brought you into this world this is a big loan that you have to pay back and how do you pay back this loan whenever you meditate whenever you are calm the merit goes to your parents and their parents it goes to your ancestors for some time that is why initially when you meditate you know you you feel that it's not happening it's not happening it's not happening but stay keep doing it keep doing it keep doing it yeah after some time you will see that the merits come to you yeah and then that peace of mind is unmatchable it's just so juicy it's amazing that peace of mind is worth attaining yeah so has a good this uh, your sisters is like who are alive also or who are just yes uh, yes anybody your father your mother their parents from your paternal and maternal side it's like a rent to you from them yeah you got your father from your grandparents 
so you have a rin for both of them also on the paternal side and the maternal side so for some time the merit goes to them initially that's why you don't feel it No, or just this. no, just this. When I'm meditating now, for some time, my mer the merits of this particular meditation, like you just did contentment. If it is your initial years on the spiritual path, it goes to mom, dad, and grandmother, grandpa from both sides. For this body, this body meditating. Got it? Yeah. So, Alabdha Bhumi Katwa, this is an obstacle which, you know, has been identified on the path for every seeker, every seeker. Yeah. Soon you will come to a stage where meditation will be just boof. You don't even need a meditation to start and you're gone. Yeah. It's amazing to reach there. So, till you get there, do not stop meditating, do not stop Sudarshan Kri. As in, see, if I have my mother and my father, I have a karma with them. That is why I took birth in this body through my mother and my father. Yes, so I have an impression with my mother and father. And this impression becomes lighter and lighter and fades away. And it is good that it fades away right now when I am still alive in this body. Are you seeing this? So it's basically nothing but a process of this happening. So if it's happening here, but I cannot experience that depth in my meditation because it's working at a very deeper level. Remember some of you used to ask me, how? How does impression get wiped? How? Yeah? This is one way. This is exactly how it happens through meditation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Alabdha Bhumi Katva. Yeah. Next is Anavasti Tattva. Oh, it happened to me, but it is not there continuously. Anavasti Tattva. Instability. Same thing. Exactly same thing is happening. Yeah. So, the initial experience came. My first Sudarshan Kriya. Fantastic. Out of the world. Again after that it became very normal, mind got used to it. But what is happening actually? The merit is going, is going to the ancestors. So both of these go hand in hand. Huh? Alabdha Bhumi Katva and Anavasti Tattva. It will happen, just keep meditating. Do not give up. Okay. Clear? So these are the nine obstacles he says that come on your path and if you are suffering from these nine he says you will have some signs and symptoms suppose you have the flu virus because of the flu virus you have some signs and symptoms of headache and body ache and fever these are signs and symptoms like that you will have these five signs and symptoms what are they dukkha sadness or sorrow Dor Manasya, a bitterness inside, not feeling good, even in the best of situation, inside it's all bitter. You know? I'm always bitter about things, I'm always shouting, screaming. Or even if I'm not shouting and screaming, inside my mind is very bitter. It's not a happy mind. That's Dor Manasya. Mana is mind, Dor is bitter. Yeah? So Dukkha, Dor Manasya. Angami Jayatva. Yeah? Angami Jayatva is there is no coordination between the body and the mind. Yes? 
my mind does something, my body does something. My mind says something, my body is doing something else. There is no coordination between the two. Yeah? My mind says meditate, but the body is like, oh, I'm very lazy, I'm just lying down on the couch. No coordination between the body and the mind. Anga me jayatva. Shwasa and prashwasa. Shwasa is the in breath is irregular and prashwasa is out breath is irregular. These are the five symptoms of this illness which is the obstacles, the nine obstacles. Clear? This was Patanjali number four. Who is God? This takes us to Patanjali number 5. What is 5? Overcoming these obstacles. Now how do I overcome them? I recognize these obstacles. I have some signs and symptoms. Now I understand 100% what my obstacle is. But how do I overcome it? Patanjali says, there is just one way. Eka Tattva Abhyasa. One pointed effort. Ek Tattva Abhyasa. Just take one thing and keep doing it again and again and again. Yeah, Guruji said very sweetly. What he said? Beat around the bush. Yeah? Doesn't matter. You don't like doing Kriya. You just keep doing Kriya. 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 Yeah? Just keep beating, beating, beating the same thing. It will happen. Yeah? Ek Tattva Abhyasa. Or just keep reading the same scripture, the same thing, the same thing again and again. The mind will get bored and when it gets bored, yeah, it comes to a quietness, a stillness within. Where it's just bored, it gives up. We are waiting for the mind to give up. The day that mind gives up, it's chitter chatter, chitter chatter stops because it's bored. And that boredom will then lift you to a peak. Do you get it? Ek Tattva Bhyasa. Yeah. So, Patanjali also said, what is this lifting to the peak? That peak where you see that one, Ek Tattva, principle. What is that one principle in everything and everybody? Seeing the Brahman consciousness in everybody and everything. Yes, that is what Eka Tattva Abhyasa does. It takes you to the consciousness, to that Brahman. That is nobody else but I. I am that. Aham Brahma Sri. I am that. Soham. I am that. I am Brahma. So this Eka Tattva Abhyasa can take you there. But then, okay, if this is not really happening with me, what do I do? Then Patanjali gave you a few more techniques. Yeah? Why can't you see that one Brahman or one God in everybody? Oh, because you see four types of people. You are still lost in the form. Okay, TK, you are lost in the form. How to deal with the forms? You remember the four types of people? Come on, tell me what are the four types of people who remembers? Happy, sad, meritful and demeritful. Perfect. Happy people, sad people, people doing meritful jobs, good jobs, people doing bad jobs. These are the four types of people. Yeah. Because of this, because I see somebody happy yeah, and I am not happy seeing him happy because I am jealous. I see Dvaitam, I see two. That is the cause of my sorrow. So he says, okay. Now, you understood the cause of your sorrow, so jealousy, how to take care of this? Yeah, with a happy person, become, who remembers? Friendly, very good. Yes, Maitri. So I've just put a small formula, M-K-N-U. This is Maitri. With the sad people, Karuna. Yeah? 
then people doing meritful jobs what happens to me i usually criticize somebody doing a good job no he says become happy for them mudita is being happy with somebody doing a good job and somebody doing a bad job what do i do upeksha ignore just ignore no educate and then ignore the bad people this is one formula you can adopt in life m k n u yeah because it's so difficult for me to see that one consciousness in him in him in him in her so then he says okay at least remove this dirty negative feeling that you have because of the forms yeah it really doesn't change the happy person or the sad person or the person doing the good or the bad what does this formula do tell me what does it change our attitude towards not just attitude my impressions in the impression bag get created because of my jealousy no get created because of my hatred is created because of my criticism yeah this stops getting created despite seeing the forms i seen this yeah everything is related to karma so m k m u yeah very important formula to remember because i cannot see the brahman conscious consciousness in everybody let me apply these principles at least so i do not create impressions in my bag yeah so this is very very essential yeah so that is the first technique by patanjali the next technique pracharana if this is not working he tells you break the rhythm of the breath which we already do in sudarshan kriya this sutra itself is the basis of our sudarshan kriya i right? remember guru ji saying in the video no that if somebody asks you where did patanjali mention sudarshan kriya so he says in this sutra not the word but exactly this sutra is break the rhythm of the breath because when you break the rhythm of the breath it breaks the rhythm of the thought yeah so then you can't continue thinking the same thing and that thought breaks and then for some moments i get a relief yeah and when i keep doing this i keep repeating this i keep getting a relief and slowly slowly that impression just releases goes away yeah that is pracharana breaking the rhythm of the breath next is vishayavati what is vishayavati what is vishaya one particular object of my sense yeah vishayavati is focusing on that one for example just taking a candle flame and just staring at that yeah when you're just staring at that staring at that one little flame after some time you just get into a trance and this chatting chatting mind suddenly just shuts off it's absolutely still it's absolutely quiet yeah this is an abhyasa some particular sense yeah so this was for the sense of sight we also do the eye gazing in the happiness program that is also sense of sight in the art of silence program you do uh, you imagine whatever body part attracts you a lot yeah and then you actually imagine entering it and just being with it in a worshipful manner yeah as if worshiping it yeah that is again sense of touch so different different senses you can actually meditate on that is vishayavati next is vishokha shok is sadness vishokha being devoid of this sadness yeah be completely devoid of sadness drop sadness it's not your nature your mind is pretending yeah it just loves to wallow in pus i tell you the pus of sadness it just loves it some people make a mood out of sadness have you noticed 
they love to wallow in their misery and keep repeating that misery keep emphasizing how miserable i am get out of this habit of the mind you are jyotishmati you are the light you are that consciousness the flame yeah you are not this body and what this body is experiencing so drop it let go yeah vishokhava jyotishmati next technique vitaraga what is vitaraga who remembers what is raga craving like huh. craving craving yeah vitaraga become beyond craving yeah he is not even saying that drop craving he saying you become so strong you go beyond it like you craved for little toys you remember dolls and little things that you used to play with your cars your red car your little truck that you had yeah you were so feverish about them you would not share them with your brother or sister but today you are beyond it right yes so today what has happened to you is not vairag only it's vitarag beyond it there's a difference huh between vairag and vitarag yeah vairag is where it does not interest me anymore yeah it's something that would interest somebody else of my age and with me you know on this path yeah but i am so established in the self it does not affect me anymore by rag yeah vitarag vitarag is that you have grown so much that it has become smaller than you something smaller than you can never even attract you have you noticed this you are attracted only to something bigger than i am you feel the joy in that mercedes benz car is bigger than i am or what i have today joy in that multi million dollar house is bigger than what i am in today yes mind is always attracted to that bigger joy yes but when you go beyond that it's called vitarag so you've gone beyond the joy of toys it has become a small little joy which is insignificant to you now got it he's saying make this entire world so small that you go beyond it you become vitarag Very beautiful, na? Swapna nidra gnana, yeah. With the knowledge of sleep and dreams, one can also get rid of these obstacles and go deep into meditation. We've done this, yeah. Knowledge of sleep, actually seeing how the consciousness withdraws from the body, goes to the mind, and from the mind also it withdraws, and somewhere you are absolutely in deep sleep. yeah but when it comes back to the mind yeah then you see dreams and then the consciousness comes back to the body and then you wake up in the morning yeah we will do this three states of consciousness more in detail soon yeah but this is the knowledge the swapna and nidra knowledge that actually helps you get over obstacles and go deeper into meditation yeah and dhyana by doing different kind of dhyana there are many many different kinds of meditations which can help you go deeper into your own self these are all the techniques he says for ekatatva abhyasa yeah this is the way of overcoming obstacles and what is the sign of progress in it the last sutra i left this out intentionally last time yeah so the sign of progress is paramanu param mahatva antosya vashikara vashikara 
वशी करना वश में करना इन हिंदी दैट स्मॉलर देन द स्मॉलेस्ट परमाणु smaller than the smallest and bigger than the biggest yeah come into your purview you yeah. know what does this mean that you can start understanding that everything is just the brahman consciousness yeah when you go deep into meditation yogis rishis who used to meditate for years and years and years together and gave the first 25 years of their life only to study the self and the brahman and their own mind and emotions they reach such a stage in meditation where in meditation they could see the space they could download all information yeah so it is said no all the vedas are downloaded by the rishis they never claimed that these vedas are written by us they never said it is my knowledge they never said it is my creation yeah if you look at the upanishad stories yeah the upanishad gyana pick up any upanishad book you will not see an author for a particular story you will not see an author for a particular knowledge point why So they say that all this knowledge was downloaded yeah in the vedas itself you will have knowledge about the planets and how the planets work and how the constellations affect the you know the body and the mind how did they do all this research without any technology tell me how is this possible that means there is another realm of existence which you and i right now limited by this physical body cannot even fathom yeah a person who goes deep into meditation who unites with the self and completely disassociates with the mind body complex he enters a separate realm of existence where everything all that is knowledge comes to his purview yeah he becomes the knower of everything you become the knower of all yeah when that happens to you then you have progressed that is the sign of progress yeah that's why people go to gurudev and ask no guru ji should i get married to this boy or girl is this good for me that is why people go and ask guru ji no should i do this or should i do that should i take up this business or not why because in guru ji's purview everything is there past present and future you and i see this as past present and future but for gurudev it is not like that yeah for you and me right now it is like looking through a peep hole when you look through a peep hole whatever i see right now through this peep hole everybody do this in front of you do this so what you see in front of you in that little hole that is the present now move this to your right yeah your present is changing whatever was was the past yeah that does not exist for me anymore i have already moved to the right yeah but for gurudev this peep hole doesn't exist he is not limited by this body so for a rishi or muni or sage or any person who meditates this limitation of the body drops he recognizes i am not the body so then the past the present and the future can be seen from this level of existence because the peephole does not exist anymore the limitation of the peephole does not exist anymore so everything comes into his or her purview paramanu param mahatva antosya vashikara got it yes Uh, like 
for us when we say living in present moment, that means you mean the present moment was like going through the peak or looking at what's the moment in front of me. But looks like with this explanation, I can think for enlightened persons, the moment is not limited to what's in front of them, for it's like an infinite duration, as if I see from my from my point of view, it will be infinite duration for them. Perfect. But it is just a moment for them. Correct. Is it a yes. Correct yes. Absolutely. It's like looking at something from an eagle's eye point. When you are flying high up there, everything you can see, you know, the entire city, all the people. But if you go down to just one particular house, you can only see inside that particular house in that particular room. Yeah. So not being limited by this physical realm of existence, but flying to a higher realm of existence from where you can see it all. Please don't start imagining that you'll get wings and you'll start flying like an eagle. I just was being poetic right now to explain it to you. Yeah. We are limited in our vision. And when this limitation breaks, you break out of this limitation of I am the body. Yeah. And then smaller than the smallest and bigger than the biggest comes into your purview. Yeah. Patanjali 1 to 5, all clear, complete review. Any questions on any of this? Take that seat, would you please explain more about Om? About, sorry? Om. Om. So it is said that at the beginning of the creation, when there was nothingness, just the Brahman consciousness. What is the Brahman consciousness? It's very difficult for you and me to imagine nothingness, no? In our head, nothingness equals to the opposite of fullness, right? But it is not that. It is beyond even that nothingness which our little intellect cannot comprehend. Yeah? This nothingness that is, or it is just energy, it does not have a form. Yes, That has a particular vibration. That vibration itself is Om. It's not a sound, it's a vibration. Yeah. So they say the entire space yeah, all planets, everything have a particular vibration of that Om. Yeah? Either it will be in a faster rhythm or a slower rhythm or at the same rhythm. But they all have that particular vibration. It is the vibration of the universe. And sound is nothing but a vibration. You must have studied this in school. You remember the tuning folks? They determine the frequency of the sound. Yes. There are sounds that you and I cannot hear but a cat can hear. Yeah. So it is beyond our threshold level. We have a particular range. I have forgotten the range. I was bad in physics class. So that particular range is only what we can hear. And that sound is nothing but frequency. Om is nothing but a frequency, a vibration. Yeah? That is why we don't call it a, a word. It's not a word. Yeah? Om is a sound, we say. Or Om, even better put, is a frequency. Yeah? Then, then how do we meditate on it? Uh -huh. That is why it is said that you should never like take it as a Bij mantra, as in you cannot silently meditate on it. You have to chant it because it's a frequency and the closest a human can get to a frequency is through sound, vocal, right? So that is why we chant it out aloud. That is the best way to do Om for this reason.
Yeah, just by chanting, you connect to that Brahman consciousness that is everywhere. Yeah, not just on our little planet Earth. There are so many planets out there in the universe. The universe is so huge. It's a multiverse. Yeah, and that is the way to connect. And that's what so many rishis, munis and sages have done. Yeah. Any other question guys? All good? All Patanjali experts now? Good. Great job guys. Very few people reach this, take an exam and manage completing it successfully and reach here. So next week we will go deeper into Patanjali, Patanjali 6. Yeah. Those who have still not managed to complete their exam papers, please complete it and send it to me. Exam is mandatory. If I do not receive it, you cannot go ahead with this group. You will have to join a future group. Yes? And guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. Okay? Jai Gurudev!